What have I created? <laughs> and we laughed. Davis and welcome to Taskmaster. We are the Olympic level testers of professional jesters. We're the World Cup for those who do stand up. We're the summit of Everest for folks whose mouths never rest. We're the final of Wimbledon's for the trying to be funny ones. <laughs> We're the Henley Regatta for those making laughter. The US Open Golf Tournament for people working in merriment. We're the World Championships of Sumo for individuals committed to making you go ho-ho. <laughs> Take my point. Please welcome Julian Clary! <laughs> Lucy Boba! Sam Cumball! And next to me, a man whose hair has gone so grey during the time we've been making this show that his wife told me, in confidence, that she no longer desires him and, in fact, wonders if she ever really did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Chat time. Uh, I'm not going to have a chat tonight, actually. OK. I just... I have prepared something, but I've... Uh, it's on a QR code, so just scan that. <laughs> That's a Q Is that a real QR code? Yeah. It does lead to something. Something really good. <laughs> What's the prize task category for today's episode, please, Alex? Well, listen up, guys, and listen up good, because it's the greatest thing that makes quite a loud noise when you shake it. There are five points for the greatest thing that makes quite a loud noise when shaken. And the winner of the episode will win the lot, which will be the first time in television history that these very specific prizes have ever been won, Greg. <laughs> Hello, Susan. What is the thing that you've brought in that makes quite a loud noise when you shake it? It is... a waterbed! <laughs> <laughs> when I was a child, me and my siblings, we'd bring all our mattresses into the front room and we'd all, like, have a little sleepover. For Christmas one year, my mum got a waterbed and then we started playing with it and it made a really shaky sound. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted because I thought I could hear a bird in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> one point! <laughs> Do you want to hear the quite loud noise when you... Yeah, this might save it. Yeah. Yep. Hi, Susan. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for opening the batting. <laughs> Sue. The, the magnificent thing that I bought that makes quite a loud noise when you shake it is yeah. my great, great, great Aunt Margaret's glass swan collection. <laughs> oh. These actually have a, a history in that she was a survivor of the Titanic and those swans <laughs> were also saved in the lifeboat that she got into and they were, they were passed down the generations. And it does make quite a loud noise when you shake it. OK, here go the swans. That's what someone's going to win. She, she didn't really survive the Titanic, did she? I mean, she was... Towards the end of her life, she was, she was a fantasist, so we don't know. OK. It's, it was, it was... <laughs> Lucy. Do you know what a cream horn is? Hmm. <laughs> Here's Lucy's cream horn. Oh, it's got cream attached to it. Yeah, when you shake the cream, the noise comes out the horn. My God, this is a new low. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just have some points, please? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you now, you're doing the best so far. <laughs> and that's incredible, bearing in mind you stuck an air horn onto a can of cream. <laughs> <laughs> Sam? I've got a bucket. <laughs> Why, lined with sandpaper. OK. Full to the brim of matches and fire alarms. <laughs> That is full to the brim. <laughs> this is going to be a hell of a noise, right? Here we go. <laughs> 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 oh, 
the worst round. <laughs> Master. Yes. Hey, listen, my granddad gave me this when he was in the Hindenburg. Yeah. <laughs> Julian, it's all, it's all for the taking. Ah, yes. Um, this is a drawer full of cutlery. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like someone's back in the game. <laughs> I mean, it is generally from my home, and uh, the cutlery is from the Isle of Wight ferry. <laughs> OK, here's a drawer full of cutlery from the Isle of Wight. From Ferry. the Isle of Wight Ferry. <laughs> yep. There we go. <laughs> it's the worst ever. It's the worst round in 16 series. <laughs> <laughs> so who's getting the solitary point, Greg? Well, Susan, of course she is. <laughs> Next up. Yeah. I don't care if they were from the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Two points to Julian. <laughs> At least something got destroyed with Sue's. <laughs> Three points. <laughs> I'm going to give Lucy four points for her cream horn. Lovely. And Sam Campbell takes home the big five. Really? Yes. Well, that's right. <laughs> OK, what have you got for me, Alex? Mm -hmm. Well, now on Channel 4, it's Robot Wars. <laughs> This is the most impressed I've been. I've got knee pads on. Thank the Lord. Promising. Yeah. It's fallen over, that dog. Yeah, if you want to write the dog, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank what, you, Sue. What even is that? That's a weasel. Busy little shit, isn't it? <laughs> no. Is this part of it? Don't worry about the dog. He's, he's happy. Avoid the rubbish robots. You may not remove your blindfold at any point. And at least one of your knees must be touching the floor throughout. Longest time untouched by a rubbish robot wins. Your times... Your time starts when the rubbish robot starts. These are the rubbish robots. The rest are just animals. Oh, so they're not my enemies? No, they're your friends. You're going to ask me to kneel down in a masterful voice? <laughs> kneel, Julian. <laughs> right, that's what... Is that your starting position? It is. Times okay. I've been asked that. <laughs> well... Quite formal to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your starting position? <laughs> then I'll begin. <laughs> Sam hated everything about this task, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've loved some of the others, but this one I thought was a dud. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you feel? Well, I think we're all looking forward to watching it now. <laughs> First one. He came with hope. Will he leave with glory? It's Julian Clare. <laughs> right, Julian, here we go. Ah, no, it just hit your back foot. That's the end of the task. Well, that, is it over now? It's over. Oh, well, up. Do you enjoy it? <laughs> it didn't last long, did it? That sometimes happens. <laughs> Thanks, Julian. <laughs> Sam is quite right. It's not one of your best. <laughs> that was, uh, for me, two and a half seconds of gold. <laughs> Who's next? OK, will they be jammy dodgers? It's Lucy and Susan to the rescue. I'm quite close to them here. Right. Right. That's where you're going to go, is it? <laughs> OK. OK, well, your time starts when the robots start. Here we go. All right. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. <like> <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You want to avoid the robots. Ah! <laughs> we trained it harder. Ah! <laughs> this 
is the future. This is what it's going to be like, isn't it? Everyone trying to hide from robots. The whole point of, like, blindfold play is that you keep... Oh! You came with me. What? You've just been struck by a rubbish robot. Have I? I didn't know that it didn't strike me. Look. I saw it hit you. It didn't hit me. <laughs> Look. That's nowhere near me, mate. It struck your left... It didn't. <laughs> Do they know I'm here? Oh, yeah. Ah, did you just get grazed on it? Oh, yeah, and again. I think, yeah, I think that one... Yeah, I'm going to stop the clock there. Does it mean it's over now? Of course, you say it didn't... We'll carry on. If you say it didn't hit you... I don't think it hit me. I didn't feel it. <laughs> Who's controlling the rubbish robot? God. <laughs> <laughs> now. now it hit me. I felt that. OK, well, I'll stop the clock then. Shall I go now? Yeah, and watch out for the robots. <laughs> Do you think this is what the future's going to be like? Yeah, that is sort of like what my day-to-day -day life is like. <laughs> That's my favourite task. To be fair, there were some genuine moments of jeopardy mm -hmm. there. Her tactic was, I'm using my ears, which is quite pleasant. <laughs> she was listening for where the robots were, which is quite... It worked. She avoided the robots for three minutes and 42 God, seconds. That's good. That's that's good. good. <laughs> Susan had a, an interesting technique to avoid the robots, and that was to go into complete denial. <laughs> <laughs> complete denial that the robots got anywhere near her. Yeah. I thought that was something furry, so I was like, that wasn't the robot. Yeah, I know, but the weird thing is there was someone who was looking who <laughs> confirmed that the robot did strike. No, by that point, I don't trust that guy. You were too deep in character, <laughs> right? Too deep in character. As some nutter. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first robot may or may not have struck her at 1 minute 56, uh, and then we finally stopped it at 3 minutes 03. <laughs> Are we taking the first one as a strike? Obviously. The one that did it. <laughs> Maybe there was more jeopardy than you thought there, Sam. <laughs> We're down to the last two. It's Sam and Sue. So, can I touch the robot with something else? All the information on the task, please put on your blindfold. Come on, my little... Ooh, they're absolutely creepy AF to touch. Can you see anything? No. Can you see anything, Sue? Oh, OK. Oh. Right. OK, good luck. Your time starts when the robots start. One of the rubbish robots just caught your left and right foot. <laughs> that finished? That's nice that you let your nephew come up with tasks and once every while. <laughs> it makes you appreciate the really good ones. <laughs> You've really got it in for this task. As soon as we saw shots from the ru rubbish robot's perspectives, wow! <laughs> And there should be a spin-off! We're talking merchandise, calendars! <laughs> Sue, your ferret swiping technique was... pretty sweet. <laughs> I just needed to grab them by the tail and let them work for a living. <laughs> they both did good tactics by starting behind the robots instead of immediately in front of them. <laughs> but their times... It's such an exciting task, this one. Um, <laughs> Sam avoided them for one minute and four seconds. Sue, one minute and seven seconds. Wow! Wow! So the final score, Susan actually came second with her one minute 56. Uh, gets four points. Sue, three points for one minute 07. Sam, two points, one minute 04. Julian, one point for two and a half seconds. <laughs> Lucy, three minutes and 42 God, seconds. It's so, it's a full five points to Lucy Bowman! <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, I'd love to see a scoreboard, please, Alex. Well, she's actually in first place. Lucy's got nine points in the lead. Yeah. Yeah. And what is next, pray tell? OK, next we have a team task in two places at once. <laughs> Pose. Pull it, do you think? Oh, it's under, it's in, it's in here. Oh, cool. Is it a guinea pig? <laughs> Recreate your teammate's garage scene. You have 15 minutes. Your time starts when your teammate calls. Can I touch this? Oh, shit. Oh, Christ. Zero, Oscar, are you receiving? Over. Hello, are you receiving me? Roger. So are you all right? I'm all right, sweet. Listen, you're going to have to do some things for me, if that's all right. Always. Instruct your teammates to recreate your garage scene. You may not say any of the words on any of the labels. You may not leave your location. The most accurate recreation wins. You had 15 minutes. Your time has already started. <laughs> also, Lucy, you've got an extra instruction there. You can read it as long as you don't press the button on the walkie-talkie. Also, you must try on all the outfits in the basket, one at a time, and not mention anything about it to your teammates. Yeah, just to make life a bit more fun. <laughs> I'll just get them out of the box one at a time. Sure. Awaiting instructions. She's gone home. <laughs> She's done. <laughs> Get instinct out of me. Everyone's going to be terrible at this. <laughs> well, let's find out. We're going to see all of them at it all at once in a montage. OK, Roger, let's start. The thing that goes on the floor that keeps your feet warm, can you put down first? Over. It's a rug or a carpet or something. Oh, I thought it was socks. In the centre of the room, I would like you to place a floor covering. If in the middle of that, you could also position... A piece of furniture used for sitting in. Right, if you're looking at your rug, can you put them on the right-hand side um, at the front, over? Just by the way, Lucy, those are the words there you're not allowed to say. Oh, for fuck's sake. No, oh, Lucy. Sorry. Please. Take a column of some description. And put on the top of the column some statuary. OK, over and out. Is there anything else? Yeah, there's loads of things. Something that you have in your house that's green and that you have to water. Something that looks like someone I once went out with. <laughs> Can you remember which hand I write with? Oh, left hand. That might be where you want to put the plinth. <laughs> so that was there. <laughs> the thing that they have in shops. <laughs> Are you OK? Is there smoke? Is there gas in the shed? I mean, you know, what, what hand do you write with? So that side, um, I'd like another plinth. And what I would like on that is something that goes quack. Is that making sense? Um, you know those two things that they have in zoos? They're very brightly coloured. Flamingos. Not two, yeah. So many ducks. Tell us where to put the things that we've got, then. OK, brilliant. Right, OK, so... To go, so, so to look in... <laughs> and I'm facing the back wall of the garage. Waiting for you to respond. Roger. Right. A rubbish receptacle with the face of a red-nosed entertainer. I could just think of Father Christmas, but I don't think he's a red-nosed entertainer. He's just a red-nosed man. <laughs> Chuck it. Where was the mannequin? I'm going to go through all the positions. In front of you, plinth on the other. Plinth. Ah! Oh, column! 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 Don't panic. In the middle of the back, you put the thing at the circus that kids are afraid of. Opposite ends to the thing that goes in the bath, 
You put the thing that the Avon church is, that's evil. Crucifix. It's evil. I'm going to go this hell, I reckon. 20 seconds. Uh, how long have we got? Tense. You've got 10 seconds. We've got 10 minutes, Julian. No, 10 seconds. 10 minutes. 10 seconds, Roger. <laughs> right, our task is complete. I think you'll be very pleased. Over. Sorry about your cough. You want to suck a fisherman's friend. Oh, Julian. <laughs> Lucy, I sometimes think that you're doing some of these tasks deliberately badly. <laughs> For a large section of it, you didn't even press the walkie-talkies so, <laughs> so that people could hear you, but you did press the walkie-talkie when you had a coughing fit. <laughs> Sam, I don't know how the hell you got to flamingos, given the description you were given, which was those two brightly coloured things they have in zoos. And you went, <laughs> flamingos? <laughs> That is, yeah, the mind is so, like, fascinating. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you. <laughs> I do think that when Sue goes into action mode, she sounds like a Second World War fighter pilot. It's Biggles. It's uh, pure yes, Biggles. Yes, it's so in control. Mm -hmm. Except there was one moment that I just loved where panic set in and caused Susan to go, don't panic. <laughs> It's funny, when I'm making notes watching these, sometimes I forget why I've written them. And I've, uh, I've written down, um, can I have a clip of Susan shouting tits? <laughs> How long have we got? <laughs> tits! <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely worth hearing again. So, how many words did they get wrong? Yes, there's a team of two, nine words wrong, a team of three, 27. <laughs> Why? Why? No. Yes, you said left once, front four times, back three times, duck once, no, right twice, <laughs> right again, eight more times, back five times, middle once, rug twice. They were on the board. They were all on the board. <laughs> Those left and right, they were instructions I was giving them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> This is a list of things you weren't allowed to say, Lucy. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> I love that it. So just bear that in mind, Greg. I'm bearing it in mind. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to see what they did. The real guy's in the middle. <laughs> so you can see the mannequin represented in the bottom left. They're all right. They both did kind of... <laughs> I think they genuinely did pretty well. They're pretty good. I've got it as a team of two, six things pretty much right. The team of three getting seven things pretty much right. But they did keep saying all the words they weren't supposed to. So if I penalise Lucy for saying all of those words, if I took a point off them, it would make that this was a tie. So let's say three points each. Three points each! <laughs> and now on to the next task, which really is head and shoulders above the rest. Susan. Hi. Ah, oh, there you are. Radiating your usual charisma. <laughs> Present a piece called Heads, Shoulders, Knees and Toes. Knees and Toes. Hmm? <laughs> Heads, Shoulders, Knees and Toes. Knees and Toes. What did I say? <laughs> yeah, you said that. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. 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 <laughs> Most powerful piece wins. <laughs> you have 20 minutes. Time stops now. You could do a very powerful piece. Well, that's what we're hoping. If someone could. Mm. Probably not me. But I don't... I don't no. I could. Don't tell yourself that. When I was in Vietnam, um, I had to do a, an English class. The only thing I could think of was to teach them, like, a nursery rhyme, heads and shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. But what I didn't realise is there were two kids at the back and every time they bent down to do knees and toes, knees and when toes. they got up against your heads, they slammed their heads really hard on the desk. 
So part of me wants to do a powerful piece around how nursery rhymes can go very badly wrong. Um, I would like A4 sheet of paper, A5 sheet of paper. Do you know which one A5 is? It's bigger than A4, isn't it? No. I think that we can incorporate some drama. I went to drama school, so I should make use of that money that I spent. <laughs> she doesn't have any shoulders. No. She's got a head there. Is it going to be a script? We'll play it fast and loose. Michael E style. <laughs> so I just need a knee and a shoulder and some toes. Yeah. <laughs> So some great inspirational material that's going to lead to these performances. Three years in RADA? Whole three. How much did RADA cost you for three years? 30 grand's worth, yeah. 30 grand for what we're about to see, yeah? Yeah. Just you wait. <laughs> wait. Lovely that you've got the experience and you're going to put on the best show. No. Lovely that Sue's show is going to be based on having hurt some children in Vietnam. Yeah. I mean, to unwittingly, but, yeah, it's cultural that you, you don't confront uh, your senior, so they just kept doing it and hurting themselves because it would have been too rude to say, oh. I'm walloping my head really badly with your weird English nursery rhyme. <laughs> so, the first piece we're going to see is presented by Sam Campbell. Inspector. A ghastly business. I can't believe it. Some kind of insane maniac has killed my parents. They've decapitated them and hacked them apart. They've chopped off their heads, their shoulders, their knees and toes. Knees and toes. <laughs> the security here is really good, but somehow they've some maniac, some fruitcake has come in and my beloved parents, they've chopped off their heads, their shoulders, their knees, and toes. Knees and toes? <laughs> we cut that out. Can't you see that I am in the throes of despair? Look, look at what they've done. They've chopped off their heads, <laughs> their shoulders, their knees, and toes. Knees and toes? <laughs> Where'd you get that? A bit late for a bit, aren't I? It's midnight. I didn't think that would be the punchline. <laughs> It's great, because if you saw someone eating a banana at midnight, yeah. you'd ring the police, but he is the police. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a strong start. Right, next up, two presentations in one. It's Julian and Susan. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes. Hello, Julian. Oh, hello. This is the best paper I could find. So it's going to be powerful, is it? I think so. I'm quite confident that it will. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Head, near shoulders, knees and toes. No one wants yellow, do they, in an artwork? Really? <laughs> There's some nice pictures with yellow in. It's a matter of opinion. OK. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Silence! <laughs> so do you do comedy? I've, I've tried, yeah. Sometimes sing in a band, Julian. Do you? Mm. What sort of music? Sometimes it's jazz. Jazz brings me out in hives. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs>
Right, I'm thrilled. Me too. Good luck with your career. <laughs> Such as it is. It was 30 grand, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> mm. No, come on. It was avant-garde. Oh. It was French cinema. It was. It was, you know... It, it was you imagery know, galore. Loads. It was a comment on the death penalty. Was it? Yeah. And you thought the most powerful way of representing that would be with a duck? <laughs> We're not going literal. And what is the comment on the death penalty? Uh, that it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Julian, as far as I can work out, sat making withering comments toward you about your lack of talent <laughs> and then drew something, but I didn't see what he drew. So, this is Julian's powerful piece. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is it, Julian? I just bothered with the... Bits in question, head, shoulders, knees and toes, so... You, you bothered with them in what sense? <laughs> in, 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 in that you labelled them? And I, well, I didn't bother with arms, because they weren't in the... Brief. ..task brief. No, it wasn't head, shoulders, knees, arms and toes. Yeah. Right. We've all known someone who looks like that. Yeah? Who's the person that you know that looks like that? <laughs> um, my nana. <laughs> when she didn't have her teeth in. No. <laughs> And this piece is powerful because, well, it's... Is it anti-death penalty? <laughs> it's anti a lot of things. <laughs> I'm just struggling for where the power is. I like it. I like it. That's the power. <laughs> <laughs> OK, do you want to see a health and safety presentation? Oh, at last. <laughs> well, here's one. Let's go. Via Sue Perkins. Nursery rhymes are a dangerous source of head trauma. Just ask Jack and Jill, Humpty Dumpty, and the old man who went to bed and bumped his head and couldn't get up in the morning. This, this guy, that's what happens when you recklessly attempt a nursery rhyme. <laughs> but there is another way. Here at Perkins and Perkins, we supply ready prepared safety equipment for all eventualities, like this guy. <laughs> Be less this guy. And more this guy. Be better. Be Perkins and Perkins. And don't let a rhyme stop you in your prime. Further confirmation, that you, as if we needed it, that you were born in the wrong era. <laughs> Oh, 50s, isn't it? Um, I really liked it. It sort of belonged in the cinema when we were kids. You remember the guy dressed as death? It was terrifying. Donald Pleasant's going, don't swim here, you'll drown. Oh, and then no. just children falling to their death. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> traumatising. You kids don't know how lucky you've got it these days with adverts. Oh, buy a train. <laughs> Finally, here is something macabre from Lucy Beaumont. Brother Alex, I am bored. Can we play a little game? Head, shoulder. Oh, this lizard. Oh, this is a funny tattoo. Oh, this tattoo is from the 1990s. <laughs> Oh, I'm good as it. <laughs> Shoulders, knees. Mm, it's a poly. Knees are plaster on that. Knees and <gasps> toes. <laughs> Audience favourite. <laughs> well, the first thing I, I absolutely loved the aside of pointing out that Alex has had a tattoo done in the 1990s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so shocked to see it. <laughs> it was genuinely creepy. <laughs> Who were you? I was 
a lady who used to look after me when I was a child. <laughs> That's a worry. <laughs> If you were to sum up the whole story from start to finish mm -hmm. as succinctly as you can, mm -hmm. what was the story that you just presented to us? Uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> it was about... The duck represented... Um, uh, the RSPB. <laughs> Sometimes you shouldn't talk to the creators. <laughs> Sometimes you should just see it and judge it on face value, because now I think it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me just say, first of all, I enjoyed all of them more than one point. <laughs> OK, then. <laughs> so, this is a roundabout way of me giving Julian's picture two points. <laughs> two points. <laughs> there was a lot of enjoyment in both Susan and Sue's. Because they were powerful pieces, I'm going to give both of them, and you're not going to like this. Four, Four points. Four points. I saw that coming. And I'm going to give the weird police people, and I'm going to ignore everything Lucy said about her own piece. <laughs> I'm going to give them five points. Each. There we go. Five for Lucy. Five for Sam. Well, well, well. Quick look at the scores. Yes, well, they're all on double figures, except for Julian this time. At the top of the table, it's Lucy still with 17. Yeah. Yeah. Can you please make your seats and head to the stage for the final task of the show? Yeah. Alex, who's going to read your task out? The leader, Lucy Beaumont. Pineapples amongst you for 15 seconds whilst the taskmaster shuts his eyes and has a little think. <laughs> when the taskmaster opens his eyes, he will say if he thinks you are holding a pineapple behind your back or not. If he accuses you wrongly, you get a point. Most points after three rounds wins. It's a simple game of hide the pineapple. Yes, it is. <laughs> I don't need to close my eyes because I have this. <laughs> <laughs> Pass these down for now. The time hasn't started yet. I think all of you are perfectly capable of hiding a pineapple from me. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've only got a small torso. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I don't> <laughs> so close your eyes, Taskmaster. <laughs> Fifteen seconds of passing the pineapple begins now. <laughs> Taskmaster, you may open your eyes. <laughs> Julian, have you got a pineapple behind your back? No, on my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you now, I do think Julian Clare has got a pineapple behind his back. <laughs> Lucy, it's pretending her knees are giving away. <laughs> I think that that bit of overacting suggests to me that she isn't concealing a pineapple <laughs> behind her torso. <laughs> Talk of overacting. Look at Perkins, for God's sake. <laughs> Stick two pineapples on the Sue's. Will people watch this? <laughs> I think I might be wrong. Take it off Perkins. Put it on Beaumont. Fuck you. <laughs> Poke your face. Poke your face, remember? OK, well, let's see how you've done. Julian. Oh, he's good. The man is good. You're talking about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy, do you have a pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, do you have a pineapple? <laughs> no. No way a Sue Perkins got a pineapple right now, man. One point to Perkins, which of course means that Susan Wakoma. 30 grand, baby. <laughs> Susan in the lead, that's point each. Round two! Taskmaster, please shut your eyes. You really said what that if one of us has two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please stop passing by <laughs> Uh, 
is it possible that one of them might have three pineapples? <laughs> Anything's possible. Julian has got a pineapple. Lucy Beaumont hasn't got a pineapple. Sam has got a pineapple. I really want to foil Rada at the end, though. <laughs> Sue Perkins hasn't got a pineapple. Rada, this time, has a pineapple. I'll get you, Rada. <laughs> Susan. 30 gram, baby! <laughs> Sue Perkins, do you have a pineapple? I don't. He's not a pineapple. Okay, so Sue Sam remains on one. Definitely has a pineapple. I'm not a crook. <laughs> Lucy. Oh! <laughs> That's good, she gets a pineapple. However, we've only seen one pineapple. Oh, so I, I wonder where the others could be. <laughs> Bam! So it's the final round of pass of pineapple. Susan's in the lead. 15 seconds of passing the pineapple begins. Six seconds left. <laughs> OK. Right. You may open your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to start with, Greg? <laughs> I think Julian the first time, has no pineapples. Lucy Beaumont... Don't think she's got a pineapple. Perkins has a pineapple. Damn you, Rada. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a bloody pineapple this time, and this clan's got a pineapple. OK. If this Australian has three pineapples on him, <laughs> I am going to lose my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Julian, he doesn't think you've got a pineapple. I do not. I don't. Every time you've seen through Julian Clary. Yes. Funny. Yes. <laughs> Lucy has got it right once. You don't think she's got a pineapple? She do hasn't. I'm sure of it. I've, and you were right. I'm right. Sue Perkins. No pineapple. Yeah! <laughs> 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 you like... Would you like to see Rada? You've got three pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see Rada now, because I know this time I failed Rada. <laughs> you said she's got a pineapple. Susan, do you have a pineapple? 30 grand. <laughs> Sam's going to show the Taskmaster if you have a pineapple or not. He's got a pineapple. Where are the other two pineapples? They're just over there. <laughs> well done, you pineapple hydras. We'll add that to the final scores. Please come and join me. <laughs> so, uh, Julian, unfortunately, came last there because he didn't fool you at all. He gets the one point. Lucy and Sam both get... Three points, because they came joint third. Hello. Sue came second, get four points, but the actor, Susan Wakoma, gets the full five points! <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Fair play, <laughs> OK, and that means, in terms of the series, Susan, you are now uh, still last on 80 points. <laughs> Lucy, you have 85. Sue, you are on 89. Julian, 95. Sam, in the lead, triple figures now, 106. <laughs> So, and so it's been a tight episode. Three points separating the top four, but the winner with 20 points is Lucy Bobon! <laughs> Lucy Bobon wins! Please skip up to the stage and shake your noisy prizes! Down, four to go. See you next time. But for now, here's tonight's winner. Celebrating on a stage, it is Lucy Mama! <laughs>
For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.